Anyone, anyone here knows me? Can you raise your hand? I'm not so famous. I thought I'm very famous. Okay, thank you very much. So my name is Ramit Rajni Rosa. Today I will share with you my journey on the unusual path travel throughout my previous years. Before I begin with that, I just want to know from raise of hands, how many of you have gone through or are going through this journey, the first part, from school, entering university and waiting to be graduated? Can you raise your hand? Wow, so many of you. So you are in the usual path. Okay, are you happy with that? You are happy with that? Really? Okay. Let me ask you a question. What if you are not in the, in the usual path? What if you couldn't follow the ministry? How do you feel? How do you feel? Frustrated? Humiliated? Embarrassed? Or maybe you go down to the lowest self-esteem that we have. Right? Is it true? Probably. Alright? So here, I just want to show you those are the usual parts that many of you are taking now. But I want to share with you those unusual paths that I took. Maybe some of you say, you are not so lucky. Okay, it's okay. I will share my story. So in 1990, after my SPM, okay, we call it in Malaysia O-Level, I actually called a few universities and to make sure whether I get admission. So I pull up my phone, home, home phone, and I call. Every each university I call, the answer is, so sorry, Mr. Ramesh, Muhammad Zaidi, unsuccessful. Number, university number two also, so sorry, calling, spelling out my full name and my IC number, but still, sorry, you are unsuccessful. What I did, I tear all the acknowledgement card and letters, I throw it in the rubbish bin. I'm so frustrated. What happened to me? So, I proceeded to take my Form 6. And in 1991, I started again calling a few universities, asking about my ex admission results. So what happened? What do you guess? Can you guess? It's the same. I'm so sorry, no admission for you. You won't, you are not successful to enter. I cannot mention the university, but so many universities I applied. Okay. And in 1992, right after my uh, STPM, my A level, I applied again. And guess what? What do you think? It's the same answer. It's like repeating on tape. I'm so sorry, Ramesh KS, Muhammad Zaidi, you are not successful to enter any university. So I was like thinking to myself, what happened to me? Am I the only person in the world or in Malaysia who couldn't even enter a university? Most of my friends actually already entered university. After my SPM, many of my friends who get very uh, poor results than me, all of them managed to enter university, but not me. What happened to me? Something wrong. I didn't know. So I was bombarded with a lot of questions from my family, my friends, my teachers, and they actually saying that, what happened to you? You should be like your brother. You should be in university. At this age, you should be studying. I said, I don't know. I cannot answer. It's not me. I, I'm not the person who developed the system. So what happened? So it's so difficult for me to actually explain to all my friends my teachers and my family members, because what? Because I'm not in university. Nobody wants to hear from me. It took me 10 times the effort to make them, to convince them, but it's impossible. So what happened? I started having, I'm trying to make what I call an experiment. I called my friend, who are many of them who are studying in UTM, in UPM, UKM, USM. Okay, I told them, let's have some tea, some break tea break, lunch break, and so on. So they agree. I said, okay, let's go. And at that time, they were in their second and third year of university. So they have another two or three years to finish. So we had discussion. I, I wanted to know what is it like to be in the mainstream because they are in the mainstream, right? Not like me. So they are in the mainstream. I want to know what actually you learn in university. So they say, oh, we have a lot, a lot of assignments. We have a lot of projects. Lecturers giving, uh, giving us headache, giving this and that, this and that. So I was like, okay, is it enjoyable? Ramesh, please stop asking this question. I was like, why? Now it's break. It's not 
semester period. It's already out of the semester. Now we want to release all the stress. That's why we agreed to meet you. Don't ask that question anymore. I was so surprised. So I was expecting something so intellectual that can come, that could come out from these people who are in the mainstream. What happened? They are, not in the, they are in the mainstream, but they are not showing me any scholarly features. So I, was, I started to have this impression that hmm, if I am to follow this mainstream, I will be like them. So I made my choice. I'm so confident I made my choice not to be admitted. It's another one. I choose myself not to go to university. So that's my decision. So although I'm not in university, but I have... I believe that I'm capable of doing a lot of things. Why? Because my result is better than them. I should be there. They should be out, right? But, okay, it's okay. I'm not in the uh, mainstream, but still, I believe I'm capable because of the basic results of my examination. And number two, I was asking myself, this is, that, that time I was 19 years old. I was asking myself, I don't know whether you have asked yourself in this, this question, is it? Worth to be in mainstream? Is it worth to be in university? I was thinking like everything in the university was choreographed by lecturers and they were giving you all the courses through curriculum, right? Why don't you choreograph your life yourself? So I was thinking like I'm going to choreograph my life myself because I choose not to go to university. And number three, I also believe that experience is the best school of life education. And that very moment, because I heard a lot of different stories about students who graduate from university, they didn't perform very well, and so on. So I was having that. Of course, maybe you feel like, Ramesh, that's very narrow. Yes, of course. But that is what happened to me. So I, you can say I have a very narrow mindset, but that time, I already have the impression that I'm not going to the university yet, so I made the choice. All right. So I decided to work. So I'm local. I'm, I'm not local from here. I'm from Sabah, East Malaysia. Drew, you have to go. You went there. Okay, so it's a nice place. I love it. Actually, I love it so much. And I, did, I decided to work. I got a very good opportunity to work uh, in a tour company, one of the most famous tour company at that time. That was in uh, 1992. Okay. And I, I travel a lot, a lot. Uh, this is Mount Kinabalu. I travel almost three to four times a week. So you imagine, eh? most of you will feel, wow, so nice. Better not to go to university. <laughs> Just join like what I did. Okay, so I even climbed four times this Mount Kinabalu. Of course, before I work and after I work. And afterwards, during this, this journey as uh, working in a tour company, uh, I spend a lot of time developing or engaging with customers. I develop tour, tour programs, I connect tour programs, I bring customers around. So I learn a lot, a lot about human relationship. I learn about, a lot about uh, customer relationship, how to entertain them and so on. And also, afterwards, I got the opportunity to shift my work. Although the tour company work is nice, but I, I get better pay, I work in a Department of Chemistry in Sabah, where I learned a lot of experimentation. Experiment here, experiment there, okay? So now, just now Mr. Matthias was talking about some chemicals and so on. Alhamdulillah, I understood about it, okay? And uh, unfortunately, unfortunately, I didn't get good salary. I didn't get good pay. It's really very minimal, okay? Compared to people in West Malaysia, it's like double the difference. When I, I have my A level, I have my STPM, I should be getting maybe 1,000 ringgit, but at the time I get less than 500 ringgit, you imagine, per month. So I started, I have, I, I start to have a lot of problems. What are the problems? I couldn't pay, I couldn't maintain my life, my lifestyle. It's not really a lifestyle, I call it. I couldn't even pay my, man, uh, my monthly rent. I couldn't even pay my loan, my motorcycle loan, and so on. So many things, okay? Oh, so I'm in the mode, deficit mode. All right, I cannot bother my family. I cannot bother my mom. He, she has been working so hard for me. So I have been very independent since 12 years old. So I choose to make my own way of solving it. 
So, I started with number one. I met my housemate. So I told, I told her, I said, uh, can I get a reduction in the rent? So she, she looked at me, she said, what? Reduction in rent? Are you serious? So she just left. A few days, I asked again, and again, and again, many, many times. And she said, you are so serious in this stupid stuff. Why are you asking this? So I say, I don't have that much income to pay. You will get problem with the way you think. In future, you will get problem. I say, why? Why are you saying that? It's because he, she mentioned, you have to think big. You are not disabled. Instead of asking reduction, you should be asking how you can generate more income. I was like, I never thought of it, you know? That was out of my question because we were always try to ask for discount. Anyway, we go ask for discount. So my housemate say, you are so cheap. You are a cheap, I don't, cannot say the word, okay? Sensor. So, <laughs> sorry. You are a cheap boy, lah, okay? So you are a cheap boy. So they always call me uh, Indian boy, okay? You Indian boy, you are so cheap. So I said, why you call me so cheap? Because you asked for this call. Anyway, I started asking. I said, okay, what can I do to increase my social status? Huh, this is what I want to hear from you. So what happened? She brought me to meet a few businessmen, networking and so on. Just because, because I know her very well, she's actually my boss in my tour company, in the tour company. So she actually introduced me with a, a few businessmen. So I started selling t-shirts in Gaia Street. I started selling coffee. Okay? So also, although it's not so much, I cannot become a millionaire at that time, but it solves my problem. I don't bother other people. I don't make other people pay my bills. Right? We always feel like other people should be burdened to pay our bills. So that is what I really don't... I started to feel like that is wrong. Of course, before that, I feel that is right. Okay? So, although I'm working, I feel okay, I have my business, but I still want to improve my life. And uh, oil and gas company actually pay very well, right? And in 1994, I saw one advertisement. I applied for that. Okay, so it's for apprentice scheme. So I applied for that advertisement, I, for the interview, I went for the interview, it's around, around 50 people in the hall, and then suddenly they say, okay, please come into this room, you will be taking an aptitude exam, physics, chemistry, mathematics, safety. I said, okay, let's go and take the exam. After we took the exam, 15 minutes, they call, okay, I'm going to call your name, you will pre prepare all your certificate, go into the room for face-to-face -face interview. So they called me as the first person. I was like, Yahoo! Oh, of course, I didn't know whether I can be successful or not. But I said, oh, Yahoo! This will change my life. After 1990, I didn't get university. Now I will become millionaire in oil and gas. <laughs> so when I came into the room, you know what the guy said? The HR officer mentioned to me, can you stop pursuing this application? I was so surprised. You imagine, out of the logic, he said, please stop pursuing this application. I was like, what? What is this? So he, he told me, this post is meant for you. But he mentioned, they admit that my results was the best. But why you want to throw me away? Again, I'm not in the mainstream. You see? That was my point. The way it looks like, the point on the top is actually become the upper level. The lowest point become the lower level, in between that become the passing mark. So, so many of my, my, the attendees, the interviewees, are here. So, because of me, what happened? They wouldn't be able to take any face-to-face -face interview. So, they requested me to get out of the room, consider that I never attend the, ex the, the exam and so on. So, they become like this. So, I was so frustrated, I feel like, this world is really, really giving me a lot of challenges, okay? But the officer say, don't worry, I can feel. The officer is actually a disabled person. Eh? So I still remember, don't worry, I can feel that you will be getting a very good, something will come for you in these few months. So in a few months, I think if I'm not mistaken, that was May 1994, okay? Anyway, this is a view from my hometown. Okay, 
I actually, my mom drove two hours to my office. So I went, I met my mom, my mom passed me an envelope. I opened up the envelope, there's a letter. Look at the letter, read it. Look at my mom's face and then I told my mom, Ma, I'm sorry, I'm not going to university. That actually a letter for UTM, Bachelor in Science, in Faculty of Science. So I, I told my mom, I'm not going. So my mom suddenly came out tears. <laughs> Uh, it's very my mom is here. Okay, I feel so, uh, but I have to be very strong. I said, I'm not going. I know how to build my life. I have to choreograph my life. So at the end of the day, my mom say, Ramesh, I only have two kids. Your brother is already in university. I still have you now. I want you to go. At least you settle your basic degree. Afterwards, you can do anything you like. So she left. So I was like thinking, 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 thinking. Because I don't have that much time. 26th of June, around two weeks, I have to do registration. So I thought of that and so on. And I made the decision to take the offer. Okay? So if you look here, how did I become, how did I even enter university? Okay? It's because everything I owe to my mom. Thank you very much, my mom. <laughs> Madam Go Shumoy. And I have a very wonderful and supporting life, a wife daughter and my, own, my mom, myself, so we have a very uh, good family. So what are the key takeaways here? Number one, the lesson is not only in the classroom, okay? You as a student, you must show good impression to the community outside, even you haven't finished your study. Like the one you are doing here, conducting all these events, this is some very good story to tell to people outside. They want to learn what is it like to be in university. Number two, if you don't want to, if you just want to take a degree without doing all this, just take online degree. No need to come to university. Okay? It's really wasting your time. Okay? Number, the next one is open your mouth and ask for ideas. But you get a lot of input, ideas here and there. You have to make your own decision. The decision you make is based on your own conclusion. You must do that. Don't blame other people. Number three, of course, cannot forget. Oops. Mom is... Mom with the greatest instincts, okay? You cannot deny that, all right? Just follow. Just follow, okay? <laughs> Ask your mom. Call. After this, we have to take a break. Call your mom, okay? And the last one is, if you are not willing to risk the unusual, you have to settle for the ordinary. So all the unusual things happen to you, they are reason. There are silver linings behind it. But you must take into account, you must put responsibility in that, okay? So, that is why I'm bringing this mindset to all of you in UTM, especially now I'm a lecturer, I'm an associate professor, I'm heading a center UTM, Excite, which actually conducted this TEDx for you. With that, thank you very much.